Today, I want to talk about one of my biggest role models. So right now, I'm starting to become a chemical engineer, double majoring in applied math. So one of the most important qualities of a scientist is always networking. You have to network everywhere, make friends with everyone, so in the future, basically people hire you. So my role model is Gal Kashur. She was not only an amazing artist, and she, but she was the first entrepreneur to bring a foreign art to the U.S. Art has been a male-dominated world for quite a while. Women artists have never been taken seriously, but she, Kalgashur, transformed the modern art world as we see today. She created an art group of Blue Four and brought them to America to make everyone love them. She always took an opportunity to present her artists. She basically spent her whole life uh, advertising for them, finding them um, places to exhibit all over the world, not just America. Uh, she later became an educator for the purpose of creating a new wave artists with open imagination, meaning uh, she would have a different approach for, for art. She wouldn't just have to make them like draw shapes and do circles like we do normally. She would just let them uh, use their imagination. Today I will talk a bit about Shuya's overall life, her involvement with the Blue Four, and my favorite herpes from her enormous collection at the Norman Simon Museum. Galka Schur was born Emily Esther Ashur in Germany uh, in 1889 to a middle class Jewish family. As a young woman, she studied piano and painting, but it was in 1915 when she first saw paintings by Jelinski in the exhibition in Sweden, which took her life to a new direction of an uh, ardent art supporter and promoter. Uh, also, Jelinski nicknamed Shur Galka the Russian word for Jagdo, which is basically like an intelligent chrome. In the years which followed, she became closer to associated with Jelinski and the artist, Feninger, Klee, and Kandinsky, who she named the Blue Four. In San Francisco, which she moved uh, to promote them, she quickly gathered important friends around her. The most amazing part about her Galka was her personality. She was the most open, the most social person ever. That's what really allowed her to become uh, the important art dealer she was. And she knew everyone and she made connections with everyone and opened up the um, art prospect for the European artists in America. Uh, historian Vivian and David Barnett uh, wrote out the 500 page catalog of her collection in Northern Simon. And the way she described Galka is who set out on her own and invented a role for herself in the art world. Also, Shura's lifelong friend, Let Velasco, wrote in him a memoir. She frequently met rejection and disappointment, but her personal philosophy and determination were so strong and her commitment to her task so great that she refused to be done uh, by any adversary. This is honestly why she is my role model, because she changed the world because she wanted to. That's what she wanted to and that was her goal in life, which she completed perfectly. Now let's talk about the Blue Four. The Blue Four con uh, consisted of Vasily Kandinsky, Alexei Jalinsky, Paul Klee, and uh, Lionel Fernier. She convinced to uh, was four artists in 1924 to make her their regular representative of the United States. They all shared a common vision about art being a vehicle for deeper understanding of self and the world, and adopted the identity of the Blue Four not because of a shared aesthetic style, but largely for the sake of marketing. Sure equated the color blue with spirituality and unity. She organized the first American exhibition of her work in New York Gallery in 1925, and the following year traveled to California and began showing their work in major cities. Because of her connection with Diego Rivera, she actually um, represented them in Mexico. One of the topics I want to talk about today is uh, why is Dr. Schur's name not familiar to everyone? Because you know, Klee, Kantinsky, Jelinski, and Finger, they were very famous artists, so everyone knows them, everyone heard about them for a while. But let's see if Galka's name is going to be in this dictionary. So first, let's look at the description for Finger. Lionel Finger, American painter, born in New York. So he's name, her name is not mentioned here. All right, let's go to Jelinski, which is the artist she spent most of her life on. It says, um, with Kantinsky, Klee, and Finger, he formed the Four Blues Group, which exhibited in Germany and America. Yeah, her name is not mentioned. And now let's go to Klee. Same idea, her name is not mentioned. So, Kandinsky was somewhere here. It also says uh, he created a group, um, and her name is not mentioned. 
So yes, I think it is uh, completely unfair. Her name is not more known in the artist world. So I found out about her by going to the North Sand Museum last summer. And I fell in love. Because she was such an amazing role figure. I wish, I'm gonna, I wish I can be a sort of networking and so goal achieving as her in my life. So today I want to talk about the painting which is actually on my wall in my bedroom. Uh, on the left you can see the heavy circles by Kandinsky, on the right there is the open plane by Kandinsky. Uh, as the rest of the smaller paintings, a lot of them actually come from Nuna Simon because right now it's officially my favorite music. So today I decided to analyze the open green. Uh, Kandinsky's quote about this um, is the upturned green is the most peaceful color there is. It does not move in any direction, has no overtones of joy or sorrow or passion, demands nothing, calls out to no one. This painting is uh, separated into two parts with a big uh, dark blue line in the middle. So it has a very negative space on the, on the bottom with kind of blowing up things in black. And then there is the absolute green part on the top right, which only has positives. Actually, on top right corner, you can see a circle with a penetrating uh, purple triangle, which is actually a depiction of Russian folk artist Saint George, who's a patron, and he is basically flying on into the skies. And then um, this is definitely a modernist painting because it's full of uh, simple shapes like triangles, rectangles, and circles. And then it's only used with bright colors. And there is basically no dimension in it because there is no shading. But then you can still see the objects are overlapping with each other.